Kevin over here. Uh, obviously, uh, your second straight camp preparing for the same guy. So I guess uh, anything change uh, in this camp? I know the last one didn't last very long, and so there was not a lot of exchange in the actual fight. No, actually, this was probably like my actual camp. You know, my last fight, I was bedridden for like five weeks. So um, I still soldiered on and made it to the fight. So it's kind of a blessing in disguise, I guess. Did you? Uh, did you? Were you able to adjust to anything in the actual preparation in camp? No, with all this extra time, would you, did you come up with a different game plan than last time before fighting Austin Lynn? No, you know, I think I was going well, considering like what happened. Man, man's six for the hundred, you know, and I'm sure got, I got into his face that early, so um, I don't think I did too much wrong. Um, but obviously, I limited my sparring this time around because of the eye injury and. Um, just made sure I come in as best prepped as I can. Did you want this rematch right away after it happened? Man, honestly, I, I, I didn't want it. Like, I was just like, ah, oh, oh, well. But then his coaches started talking shit. And then I was like, bro, first of all, you're a jiu-jitsu coach. I'm talking about striking. Man's probably never been jabbed in his life. But, um, yeah, that's, that's, all, that's the only reason why I was like, oh, you go, you go, you're going to cop the, you know, the result of your coaches talking shit. You run into that coach at all? Man, man won't want to come around me, bro. But um, there's no ill will to, towards Austin, honestly. Like, uh, he's a good dude. Made a mistake. But don't go t- talking smack and, you know, thinking that nothing will happen. And I, I know you, you said it was kind of a blessing in disguise because the last fight, you, you were, as you said, you were bedridden. But you were going to fight on his home turf. He was obviously he had a home in Jacksonville. Now he's fighting, has to fight you in Sydney. Is that another added layer of this? Like now I get to rematch this guy. His coach said all this stuff, and it's in Sydney. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, I had, the, you know, like I said, I was crook. I still went there to bang on. I copped all the all all of his hometown crowd and seeing what they wanted, and he getting all the energy. And man, uh, I didn't think much of it. You know, I'm a scrapper through and through. So here, Sydney, anywhere, you know. I'll fight anyone. And last one for me. Uh, did you get a Rock Lee tattoo? Yeah, yeah. I got a Rock Lee tattoo, you know. Fighters will, man. Why specifically Rock Lee? You know, Rock Lee wasn't gifted of all the talents, and uh, I'm, I feel like I'm the same. I'm all, I'm all heart, all, all, all grind, and um, that's why I made it here. Cheers, brother. Hey, Justin. Good to see you again, brother. Um, been a good part of your camp over at training at CKB. How was that experience for you and your brother? Yeah, it was all good. Um, just something different, you know. We, we, were, we were down a few men because our camp's not really big anyways. Our team's really small. So if a couple of them get injured, man, there's only like me and my brother and one other guy and that guy just has to cop all the punches kind of thing. So um, we went to CKB and obviously got to upskill at the same time. It was very good to be a part of the, you know, because obviously there's a lot of fighters here that, that are um, fighting. So we were kind of all aligned with the camps, and it was good. Good energies there, a lot of good talent, a lot of good skill, and a lot of hard work. And um, how was cornering your brother over in Singapore two weeks ago against an opponent that you'd already fought? <laughs> yeah, it was good. Man, um, it was a bit of sweet, I guess. You know, my brother, I finished that guy in one minute. He finished it in one, a minute 40. I carried him. He kind of like t carried him, and he ended up 50K richer, and I ended up Counting my coins. On the UFC website, it did have your name for that 50k bonus. Oh, that makes it even worse. Eh? Like, what's that going to do, man? Um, and so there's five, you, uh, five Samoan UFC fighters. Your family makes up 40% of them. Um, and four of you are fighting um, on Sunday. What does it mean to you um, to represent your culture? And particularly you uh, growing up, you looked up to Mark Hunt and David Tor. So you're now in that position to um, inspire the younger um, Samoan and children. So how does it make you feel? Yeah, you know, you know, there's a lot of responsibility, but that kind of thing's privileges, you know. Like, um, I feel like it's my responsibility now to do the best I can so the next coming fighters coming through, you know, they, they see that trajectory of fighting now. And guys like Max Holloway, too, are Samoan. You know, he's been a champion. Next thing you know, there'll be multiple division Samoan champions. I'll change it to six now. Yes. Oh, good. She's better. Uh, Justin, um, your opponent Austin, he hasn't made it out of the first round. His last three fights. Are you? Do you? Are you preparing to go fifteen minutes with him, or do you want to finish it in the first round? Man, however, you know, um, 
I've learned now, like, not to chase the knockouts. The knockouts come. Um, my coaches want to clean, you know, like, you know, just hoose, hoose, dance around, get in and out, get in and out. But my heart's saying, go to war, brother, go to <laughs> war. So we'll see what, what happens on Sunday, but I'm happy just to entertain the crowd, man, like I do always. Does that mentality from your coaches have anything to do with Mark Hunt by any chance? No, man, like, my, my older brother's my coach, you know, and he's like, bro, I told you, just stick, stick and move, stick and move. I was like, man, that's not what we did at training, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, we'll see, we'll see what kind of, um, how he comes out, then I'll just adjust to it. And just lastly, uh, is it, is it very often now that you you get people confuse you for your brother and vice versa? Yeah, man, like, Michael Bisping was like, you saying, Justin Tuffer, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, all the time, but um, sometimes I ride with it, you know. Uh, we had a funny story once, say, like, um, this, I was just, I was like, man, I'm over these photos, and this guy's like, hey, you're Justin Tuffer to my little brother. And then I, lo- I looked at my brother, and I was like, fuck, say, you're Justin Tuffer. And then he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's me, that's me. He goes, oh, can you take a photo of my friend? He's really shy, he's behind the tree. And his, his friend was like a quadriplegic in the wheelchair, couldn't move, like... And then my brother's like going over and he's like, bro, you're going to hell. Like, and I was like, oh, shit. My brother takes the photo, then he goes to shake his hands. I was like, oh, my gosh. Man's had no, no arms. And I was like, bro. This was before Melbourne, you know. And my brother turned around and he goes, bro, you're going to get knocked out for that. That's probably why I lost in Melbourne, bro. <laughs> but, yeah. Thank you. No, it's as well. Justin, just over here. Um, you guys always, you know, use the phrase "tougher gang," and you're very proud of the of the tougher surname. Um, you and Junior were slated to fight um, at UFC 284 before uh, Junior's injury. How important is it, or how much of a goal is it for you guys to one day compete on the same card together? Yeah, massive. You know, that's that's just uh, a goal of ours. We've we've fought together in like amateur shows, out of community centres, and then a bit bigger and a bit bigger. And now this is the pinnacle of of combat sports and to do that man that's only a few families have been able to do that so we'll just be in history yeah one more for me um you said after your last fight with with austin um let's run it back in sydney one and done um will anything less than a first round finish this sunday disappoint you a little bit honestly anything less than 50k will disappoint me honest <laughs> i've been shunned a few times so bro surely not here bro <laughs> cheers thanks justin just down the front here. Um, so, you, yeah, like you said, your your 50K is, is kind of the goal at the moment. Um, what where, where do you look in the future now? What what happens after this fight? Man, God willing, I um, put on a good performance, I finish this guy or, or get a decision or whatever. I really, I really want to start knocking on that top 15 door, you know. I really want to put my stamp on where I stand in the heavyweight division. And you know, I just feel like I'm floating right now and I've been just trying to find my feet, especially coming into this into this game, three fights in and straight into the UFC. So um, I really think I can make some moves and make some waves. You know, there's a lot of heavyweight names that are getting tossed around. I think I deserve to be up there. And just uh, what, what's sort of your prediction on the, on the main event? I think Izzy's going to win by KO, to be honest. Um, we did a few weeks there, there a few sparring sessions, and, man, there's... His striking and his cardio and his mentality is just on another level, man. And that Sean Strickland style of is real cool in there, but um, is he on another level? Thank you. All right, cheers, bro. Justin, just over here. Uh, in the UFC, we've seen a lot of famous sibling pairings: the Shevchenko sisters, the Diaz brothers, the Lozon brothers. Do you think you and your brother can really make a legacy as the Australian sibling duo in MMA today? Yeah, for sure. That's the goal. You know, just to. We don't really care like who we're representing or whatnot. We're just trying to we're just trying to rip our last name and um, produce knockouts. You know that's what my grandpa always wanted: set up good knockouts and um, get the family roaring and put our name into history. But definitely, definitely one of them. Oh, Justin, just a question, brother. Um, what, are you, what are you laughing for, brother? This is serious. Stutter, this bro. Is serious Stay with your chest. Sheesh. <laughs> Uh, firstly, uh, don't disrespect my bakeries like that ever again. But um, no, nah, I, I have a question. If I'm um, a hypothetical one, with the Olympics coming up next year and uh, ripping your, uh, where you're from in your country, you've got roots in New Zealand, you've got Samoan roots, ones here as well. 
what would you rep in order? What would be the, the first, second, and third that you'd be like? This is where I'm going. Ah, uh, man, whoever gives me the most funding. Nah, nah. <laughs> well, it's not New Zealand, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> No, man, I've always represented Samoa. First, you know, we're a minority in this world. Man, there's only like a couple hundred thousand people, so why not try to put them on the map? We've seen what they did with Rugby League and Tour Samoa, man, parades everywhere. That's a goal of mine to have parades there while we're knocking heads. And um, then New Zealand and then Australia. Yeah, you heard it here, everybody. He said, <laughs> he said Australia's last. Just going to put that out there. <laughs> hey, Justin. Um, you shared the post about the Batuta Advocate. Uh, nicknaming this the ultimate fussy compilation. Yep. Um, who would you say, you, and you've trained with most of the um, Samoan guys that are on this card, who would you say fussy's the hardest? Honestly, I, I think Carlos. Yeah, Carlos. Man, he's, he's for a pretty boy, man, he hits pretty hard. So, um, yeah, I'll say Carlos. Sure. <laughs> no, thanks. Yeah. Easy. Cheers. <laughs>